What's up, guys? Welcome back to Big Yogi's Garage. Today I have Juan Carlos. What's up, man? What's happening? Uh, I met him. I met him at. He used to be a bouncer. What was it? Headliners. Yeah, headliners. How you doing, man? Good. Uh, yeah, that was in uh, 2008, right? That was the first time I ever met you. Was headliners, and you were a bouncer. And then uh, you you've always been a bouncer and stuff like that. Um, Cause I, I didn't you bounce a couple of different places. I did. Uh, I bounced at uh, Main Street on. Uh, Main Street on Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh, on the east side. But it was called something else. It was called like uh, B uh, Busters or yeah. what was it called? I don't like, know. Uh, anyhow, um, I started off there and um, I worked my way up to um, uh, Headliners mm -hmm. and um, I, I met Anthony Varwig and, and Jamie um, and they, they treated me really good. and. Mm -hmm. I started bouncing. I cooked. I was one of their cooks, one of the oh, head chefs, yeah. the manager, and all that, and ran the back of the house. And the girls ran the front of the house. And it was, hey, those were good times, man. Yeah, those are fun <laughs> times. That, that was when the good old days. Yeah. Okay, so lately I've been seeing a lot of your stuff. I follow. I've been following you on social media for oh, okay, years. Yeah. And then lately I've been seeing a lot of the the arm wrestling stuff. Yeah. And then I, I'm kind of interested. That's why I got a hold of you. I wanted to talk a little bit about arm wrestling. I want to. Uh, I wanted to little, know a little bit about arm wrestling. So what is, like, what is the, is it all strength? There's a like technique or how, what, tell me a little bit about it. Um, yeah, it's a little mixture of everything. It's a strength sport um, and you gotta have uh, speed, speed kills. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're fast already, you're fast at the ready goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna take your opponent down just like that. And um, a lot of power lifters are involved in this mm -hmm. um, and they start off really good as amateurs. They're they climb right up to the top real quick as pros, um, but uh, yeah, if if you're into uh, weightlifting and all that, and um, you want to arm wrestle, anybody can do it. Okay. And we encourage more women and children to do it. Okay. Uh, you don't see a lot of women and kids do it. It's mm -hmm. it's usually all the guys, uh, um, and a lot of people think it's just a macho sport. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, and it's not. It's it's. Arm wrestling is like a brotherhood, man. Um, and we always look out for each other. Uh, mm -hmm. If you see an arm wrestler that you met before at one of these events, and you see him at the next event, and you run into them, it's like, hey, man, mm -hmm. I just saw you at the last event. How you doing? Mm -hmm. This, this, and that. And you guys are cool as hell. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it starts that bond right there. And um, everybody looks out for each other. Uh, so, you know, we don't want to see no arm breaks or anything like yeah. that. So, you know, we, we try to, you know... When we practice on the practice table, that's just practicing. You're actually on the uh, on the stage arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's for real. So, uh, how how did you even get? It? How when was the first time you got involved with this stuff? Well, we have to go back to uh, me being like, like me. five or six years old watching well, over I mean, the top. You know? Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> everybody's arm wrestled here yeah, and there. Yeah. Uh, so it started but off I'm saying, on the like, cafeteria. How did this whole tournament stuff like tournaments? Okay, so like uh, all that stuff. For sure. Let's talk about the tournaments. So there's a tournament coming up February 4th mm -hmm. called the Buckeye Brawl in Toledo, Ohio, at Jed's on mm -hmm. Holland, Sylvania. Um, that's going to be a really big, uh, big event. My event was January seventh. Mm -hmm. This past uh, January seventh yeah. in Bowling Green, Ohio. That's that's when I really like started seeing it all over. Like yeah, I, now it's on newspapers. Yeah. Uh, so Thirteen Action News, WTOL was all there. Yeah, the blade and uh, the blade, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it, it we had one hundred and fifty entries. So my first tournament was September of last year. Mm -hmm. I had thirty seven entries. 37 competitors came with their family, their mm -hmm. wife and kids, okay. and um, we didn't have any kids joining that one. We had we had three women, yeah, we had three women, and then the rest all competitors. Um, those three women, I, I gave a uh, I gave a trophy to each one of them. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets a trophy. If there's yeah. only three, then all three yeah, of you guys yeah. get it. So that's awesome. Um, and and that was one thing that was unique about this this event was my awards. So it was called the um this event was called Unchained. It was a big gold mm. chain like yeah, this. Okay, it. yeah, it was pretty badass, man. Yeah. So um that was the big unique award that I had and, mm. and everybody was trying to get it. So you have to win your class first place and mm. then you have to beat all the first place guys. Mm -hmm. You have to win the overall in order to get that chain. So you got to win the tournament, win overalls, and then you got that chain for the one hand. Then the mm. other hand, you got to do it again. Mm. It's like uh, king of the table. 
Yeah. King of the Mountain. Yeah, yeah. You fight everybody yeah, who off. Who won that? Who won the, cho- the, uh, the chain? The, gentleman, the gentleman's name is uh, Michael Todd. Oh, he's a yeah. uh, big time pro, oh, yes. and uh, uh, he's actually going for a world title as we see. speak tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in uh, Instable Turkey. So, oh, for real? You yeah. Oh, so this is all over the world. Yeah, this guy goes all over the world. Yeah. He actually did an interview with me and uh, WTOL and 13 Action News. He's mm-hmm. really, really good at it. Yeah. I, I just saw new to this. This yeah. is all new to me, man. So. Yeah, the, the, but this is good because, like, uh, you know how they say the more uncomfortable you get, the the more you sure. grow. Yeah, I agree. And like, like yeah. we got to get comfortable talking and stuff. I, I, I'm uncomfortable, too. Like, <laughs> I'm getting more comfortable, but yeah. really, like, all this, like, you know, it, uh, like, sitting with people and having conversations, yeah. it's yeah. not easy doing this, but I, it's, it's good because it's like, this will grow. For sure. And if you want to grow this arm wrestling thing, we got to get uncomfortable and start growing. And, and and that's just that's just it. Like I meet so many different people, and um, everybody's so cool about it. And mm. and they remember your name, you remember them. You get them on Facebook, social media, and yeah. um, it's like, hey, come to my tournament. No, you go to my tournament, and that's just it. So in Ohio, we have ten promoters. Mm-hmm. Ten promoters are doing a tournament every single month, um, and we're we're trying to create one big tournament. We're, we're trying to create tournaments to lead up to this big tournament. Mm, okay. And we want the ultimate tournament. Almost like end. a series into like the main event. Yes. Yeah. We, like want a, we want a state championship tournament. For here in Ohio. For, and then. Yes. We want to make a mark on the map. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start here. Uh, we're going to start in Toledo and Bowling Green. And mm-hmm. eventually uh, the promoters were talking and they want to join forces. They want each region to join forces in these tournaments. Like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mix their ideas and create something good okay. out of it. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, let's go back to the question. How did you even learn about this? Like, how, okay. how did you even learn about so, Armistice? Because I've learned, the first time I've ever <clears throat> really seen it was, like, ES, ESPN, like, here and there. Yeah. But for real, for real, the first time i ever seen, like, legit from you guys. Oh, Brian Vollmer. Brian. So, Brian Vollmer is my partner. Yeah, so, uh, see, like, I know him. For a long time ago, because I used to work at Norplast, and now okay. I guess you know him because you yeah, worked at Norplast. Yeah, work at Norplast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. that's a good story right there. Yeah. So me and Brian Vollmer, yeah, both both undefeated at Norplast. We beat everybody in the cafeteria, right? Oh. And then we finally. So bumped that's heads. how it started. That's in the ca- that's in the how cafeteria it at work. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So we have a little uh picnic area out in the warehouse yeah and that's where it's like will you meet me back there at three o'clock it literally it was something like that from yeah, yeah. from back at school like, you meet me out in the yard at 3 30 3 o'clock okay so that's kind of how it happened well brian you know i see him and i'm like man i got the confidence i'm like man, i'm gonna kick your ass i can't yeah. wait because you always got some big ass arms. oh yeah <laughs> and i'm like man you ain't nothing i'm gonna get you yeah. you know so <laughs> Finally, get out there, and Brian's strong. And I'm, like, thinking in my head, oh, shit, you know, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> so, uh, long story short, he kicks my butt. Yeah. And um, and then he's, like, hurts your ego a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 dude, I, I didn't want to do anything for, like, a couple months later. And then uh, I run into this big fella named Bob Sutton. Mm-hmm. Bob Sutton was number two in the world in 2015. Um, and, and, and he made a big splash on arm wrestling. He is known. He's a legend. And I didn't know I worked with this legend at Norplast the whole entire time. And, and, uh, this guy's huge, man. Super yeah. big. I, I mean. Oh, well, the guy worked at Norplast? Yeah. He was there for a long time before I met him and oh. comes right up to me, walks up to me. He goes, can I get a grip with your hand? I look at him like, who the hell? I'm looking at him like, whoa, who are you, dude? And he's like, my name is Bob Sutton. Uh, I'm a professional arm wrestler. And I'm like, is that even real? Is that real professional arm? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's and it's a real thing. Yes, yeah. there are professional arm wrestlers. That is a real thing, you know. So, he teaches me these techniques with my hand and says, listen, if you want to learn more, let's go meet this next gentleman mm-hmm. named Joel Hudick. We meet him, and we get with all these people that come to his practice, and they start teaching us how to arm wrestle. Mm-hmm. So I go first. I bring Brian Vollmer on. Mm-hmm. I talk to Brian, and I said, Brian, I found a group of guys that want to teach us how to arm wrestle. Me and you are both into it. Maybe we can make something work. Mm-hmm. 
So then we meet them, we start learning, we're like, man, I want to get serious. Well, how serious do you want to get, Juan? Well, I want to do what you guys do. Mm -hmm. Because when we got on that table, it was totally different. The standing table is totally different from sitting at the cafeteria table. It is nothing. It's a whole new world, man. Uh, and uh, you don't, you don't understand. Like you go from there. It's not just doing this. It's using your whole body. Uh, You're moving with it. Okay. You're using your whole body. Your whole body is the machine, yeah. and your arm is just the wheel to the machine. So, so is your legs everything forcing like shoulders? Yeah. Everything? Yep, okay. you're using your legs, your back mostly. Your back is stronger than your arm. So mm -hmm. you're going to use your back, your body in, in motion, and you're going to keep your head focused with your hand. Okay. Wherever your hand goes, your head goes. And then you you, you was telling me earlier something about the hand, the lock. You want to go up higher? Or what, how does that? You always want leverage. Leverage uh -huh. is going to... Leverage always works out for you on anything that you do. Mm -hmm. um, you're using a shovel or a course, hammer, yeah. so you want the better leverage on your hammer and your shovel. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the hand grip. It's hand manipulation, and I don't want to call it cheating, but mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of guys cheat to get where they want to be at on the start of the ready goes. Okay. So if you can get all that set up, if you can get the setup, you're going to win the match. Whether that guy is bigger than you or not, okay. if you're a small guy and you're 160 pounds going against a 250 pounder and you get the right angle on this guy before they say ready go and mm -hmm. you hit, you got the match, man. Yeah, because you could actually get all the, the lever, the uh, whatever, yeah. the momentum going real fast. Yeah, man. So The leverage, the leverage. Right? Leverage. Leverage yeah. is good. Um, Hand manipulation is good. Your grip, the start of the the start of the match. That's where it all. If you can take the start of the match before it says ready go. If you mm -hmm. got that, you're gonna. It's a good chance you're gonna win the match. Okay. So yes, it's a lot of strength and speed, but it, it's that setup, that initial setup. That's where it all starts. So is there as there are, uh, guys that work, come from the gym and work out and they think they're gonna win right away and like yes. someone smaller beats them because they have more technique. So me and Brown. Me and Brian were just talking about that. We, yeah. um, <clears throat> I didn't know for the longest time that there was a difference between uh, weightlifting, powerlifting, and arm wrestling lifting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's lifts. There's certain lifts that you have to do for arm wrestling that make you get farther with that. Mm -hmm. You will not get far if you are just in the gym working out, uh, bench pressing five hundred pounds yeah. or or um, shoulder pressing. 225 pounds yeah that is not going to make you a better arm wrestler there okay. are certain moves that you have to um you have to mirror you have to mirror what you're doing on the table in the gym okay okay so if your elbow is sitting on a on the table on a pad that's where you want to be pulling something mm. back to you or you have to be mimicking those movements yeah yeah um and that's going to make you stronger. You basically have to train that. You, you have know? to train that motion, your your body, your tendons. It's all it's all part of that. You, you want to train all that for that muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like when right before a match, do you uh, can you be working out a lot, right? Or do you guys have to like like uh, stop before the match and stuff? That's a good question. So for super matches, mm -hmm. super matches, tournaments. There's two different. So a super match is one on one. I call you out and I say, "Yogi, you meet me here. Mm -hmm. Best of five, five hundred dollars, uh, right hand." And um, so you only got to win three, mm -hmm. and then that's it. So you train for that match. You take two weeks off mm -hmm. before that match, and you do blood flow, blood flow workouts, and that will keep your arm fresh mm -hmm. all the way up to your match. Um, tournament a tournament you can work out through the whole entire thing mm. you can work out all the way up to two or three days before yeah. i would suggest two or three days some guys just go all the way yeah. they'll work out the day of and go into that tournament mm. um because a tournament your your one match only lasts seconds oh, okay. a match isn't like for two three minutes man it's it's mm. over in a blink of an eye so that uh tournament once you're done you're out or is there a double elimination there's double it? elimination um oh. so the promoter that's doing the february 4th tournament he he's having something new they're doing a triple elimination for the amateurs mm. um 
and that's cool. That's something different. Um, I wouldn't suggest it because the amateurs eventually have to come in. They have to become pros someday. Mm -hmm. And to me, I feel like they need to train and they need to, they need to work up to what a pro level is and mm. pro levels do not do triple elimination. Okay. Um, maybe I, I get what he's trying to do and that's cool. That's, that's something different. So I'm interested to see how it comes out yeah. and I wish them the best of luck. Mm. Um, but I personally at my tournaments, we're not going to do triple elimination. So you guys just do double elimination. It's double elimination across the board for yeah. women's masters. Now masters, you got to be, 40 and up in my tournaments mm. other tournaments it's the the age brackets a little different they go 41 42 43 uh. is masters class and then the grand masters is 50 and above okay so um right. and they usually only do right hand right hand matches uh because so back in the 80s everybody only arm wrestled right hand mm. you never arm wrestled left hand left hand was uh they call it right now they call it the party arm the party arm. The party arm, right? Because it doesn't matter. If I lose with this, it's like, oh, you didn't beat me. Yeah. We got to face right hand. Okay. So that's kind of where that theory comes from. But um, there's a lot more left-handers now around here, and they take it real serious. So mm -hmm. it's left hand is becoming. So what? So what if you're what if you're facing a left-hander and you're not really a left-hander? You still gotta try to win with your left hand. Yes, uh, you will be ranked. Uh, there is a ranking system. I'm Are ranked you right and left. There is a ranking system for right and left, and I'm ranked with Opar. Um, I'm number eight in Ohio, mm -hmm. um, in the 242 class. And there's several number eights in each one of those classes. There's okay. a 154 class, a 176 class, um, 198, 220. 242 and 243. So that's that, that it's all considered in your weight. Yes. So and then so you guys have to weigh in and all that? You weigh in, you get weighed in, you gotta have shoes. For my tournament, you gotta have shoes, a shirt, um, pants or shorts. You can mm -hmm. wear crocs, but you have to have something on your feet and you gotta get weighed in that way. And I give you a five pound weight allowance. So come on, man. Oh, okay. If I give you five pounds, mm -hmm. And if you've ever wrestled before, you see those people cutting and they're cutting yeah, and yeah. they're not eating for days. They're dehydrating yeah, themselves. Yeah. The MMA you know? guys do that. Yeah, man. And it gets real serious. Mm. And, and if those guys are doing that for your tournament, that means it's serious, man. They yeah. they really want to come. So you, listen, you have to honor that yeah. weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big deal. Cutting weight is a really big deal for tournaments, I tell you. That's crazy. I didn't, I didn't know that... Uh, Arm wrestlers had all that. Yeah, man. There's a there's a lot more into it. So now I'm I'm on both sides of the aspect. I'm mm. uh, I'm directing tournaments and I'm in those tournaments. Mm. And you don't want to be honestly. I, I just learned this on my past one. Mm. You don't want to be involved in in a competition while you're directing the oh, okay. the show. So um, for my next ones, I mean, I know now yeah. that I'm not gonna be in any matches okay. on any of my events if i'm running the event yeah because you have probably have all kinds of other things to do oh right? god man i tell you it my last event was nerve-wracking uh i had like i said i had wto all there at the blade 13 mm. action news um the sentinel and I'm, I'm trying to talk to each one of them and each one of them want your attention they mm. want to talk to you and uh something else is going on in the, in the event like juan you're needed over here you need mm. it over there and the announcer is not He's not doing his job right, so you got to go talk to him. Oh, wait a minute, we got a delay on the table. Why? Because this guy's not up there yet. So yeah. it's I'm all over the place at an event, and um, like crazy. I said, I went from 37 entries to 150 plus. Yeah, and it was just like boom. So what's your what's the biggest dream for this? Like, what do you want? Like, what's the end goal? <sighs> uh, I I want to have that. <sighs> I want to be, I want to have the tournament that everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, for instance, there's a gentleman named Steve Pettis in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes to his tournaments. Okay. Everybody knows about it. He is known. That's what I want. I want to be known for in Ohio. Hey, Juan threw a good tournament. We're going to that tournament. Yeah. That's where I want to be. It was ran good. It was ran smooth. Um, there was good competition. Um, 
a nice that belt that chain belt. that chain is a and, and you know that's, that's something your idea was that your idea it, it, so one of my sponsors uh me and him sat down about our event and we we noticed that the gorilla okay he's going like this mm -hmm. if you see that on the picture he's going yeah. like this so we added those chains i said why don't we call this unchained yeah he's breaking the chain so we added the chains to him okay now a gentleman in mexico made me that logo the name is hector beltran okay amazing artwork i yeah, love it. hector <laughs> is amazing that guy's been so good to me um well he made this for me i went with it i can tell you right now yogi i can't stand that name filthy animals you i know? do not like it that's brian's name okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. brian came up with the I name think it's a sweet name Dude, bro. I, I didn't like it yeah he loves it yeah. he loves it and i i have to say like it's when you say filthy animals yeah what do you think of well i mean it depends on the contest yeah but yeah i know what you mean like i think because but but uh, as arm wrestlers i think you guys are the shit like we're some fit like we some yeah some dogs out here so but some people might think some dirty dogs or some dirty you know <laughs> no so listen so i when i hear the word <coughs> built animals that reminds me of macaulay Culkin, dude from macaulay home alone Culkin, i'm thinking right. like oh you built the animals. animals and i'm like damn it that's, <clears throat> that's what i think of oh and so you're thinking of a, like a comedy yes and he was too he was yeah. like dude that's funny and i'm like dude we're supposed to be like this big time arm yeah. wrestling deal yeah. look at our gorilla and it's like filthy animals what mm. anyhow it grew i love i love everything about us yeah, now i think i think, I think it's perfect. so awesome yeah. and um i'm happy that i made the decision just just to run with it let's yeah. just run it i said let's yeah. just do it so um i think it's a great name man filthy animals i think it's sweet because now you gotta look at it as a contest, as as a as an arm wrestling team, yes, or yes. it's filthy animals. It sounds sweet. It looks sweet. Yeah, man. You got the gorilla. I think it's a great logo. Yeah, it's a great idea. So uh, I seen on your Facebook something about you were gonna um, get some new shirts made and stuff. Okay. Or did you already order them and stuff? Or you, you... so Hector Beltran gave us two logos. Mm -hmm. He gave us that one and a it's a golden gorilla. Well, it's not golden. the The bottom of the logo is gold, mm -hmm. and um. I gave that one to Brian, and I ran with this one. Okay. I said, "We'll get your logo out there. We'll make we'll make jerseys of it. We'll have an alternate jersey." Mm. And um, the new ever since this event, we got new pullers coming in. Then mm -hmm. uh, amateurs um, and pros, they're all contacting me. Juan, I want to arm wrestle. I want to do yeah. this. Okay, cool. We even got women contacting us. Hey, we want to arm wrestle. After this event, it's been blowing up. My last uh, practice, we had about. 13, 14 guys that showed up, and um, some of them were new. Mm. Uh, some of them we've been practicing with. It started off with me and Brian, and we just grew this thing, man. Yeah. And uh, it's been getting bigger and bigger ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like, um, are, are we going to be able to, like, order some shirts and stuff? I see You said something about... So did you yes. ever put the order in yet already? Uh, okay, so... Because so, I was <clears> thinking <throat> about I was thinking about ordering me a shirt and stuff, but yeah. I don't know. Okay, or so maybe we can get some people to order some. Anybody can order a shirt. Yeah. I'll take PayPal, Apple Cash. Mm. Anybody can wear it. If, if you even don't arm wrestle, yeah, yeah, you can still wear it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's a badass jersey. That's a, yeah, it's you know badass what I'm shirt. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like even when I work out at the gym, I could be wearing that and do yeah. my little workout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and then um, for thirty bucks, you get that jersey. You get mm. your name on it. You'll have our sponsors on there. Okay. But um, you can put your last name on the back. Your first mm. name, if you got a nickname. Uh, like my cousin, he wants Og Dog on the back yeah, of this, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah, we can get you that yeah, for that's sure." Awesome. Okay, so how how did you get the how did you get the sponsors, and who are your sponsors? Or tell me a little bit about the sponsors and stuff. Okay, because so I want I'm interested because I want to get a sponsor one yeah, day for my sure. podcast. So, um, we're the arm wrestling group. Mm -hmm. Um, the the venue was one of our sponsors. We when we when I went to this bar, it was called um the Owl House uh the Owl House Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. We went in there just. Me and my wife went in there to just to hang out on a Friday night, and I met the owner, and and I asked him. I said, "Man, this is a beautiful place. Like, mm. you have a lot of potential here. Can I ask you what you do?" And he says, "Yeah, I got pool tournaments here. I got uh, bands that come in." I said, "How many people can you hold?" He said, "He can hold four hundred people in that <laughs> place." And I said, "Oh man, we can arm wrestle here." And he goes. I don't know anything about it, so tell me. So I'm telling him the same thing yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> and um, I told him I could pack this house 
I yeah. can pack it. The whole thing. He goes, I'll tell you what. It's yours. Do whatever you want for free. That's your sponsor. And he goes, if it grows, we'll give you some cash. Okay. <sighs> My first event, I got 37 entries. And I just was so disappointed. <laughs> I, you know, I was like, man, 37 <laughs> entries. You're like, I it. told him I was going to pack Yeah, I was like, man, I was going to pack this house, <laughs> man. So I, I don't know how my sponsor really took it. He, you know, when he first mm. saw the image of it, maybe he didn't believe in it or what. We talked about it more afterwards, and he was more interested after the event. Mm. After I showed him the beauty of it, after I showed him what was going on, I had two, three more sponsors pop out at me mm -hmm. right after the event. One, I want to be your sponsor. Okay. So, Yogi, if you're trying to do this image like you're trying to do this vision mm -hmm. show those people show everybody what you're trying to do mm -hmm. and then the sponsors will just come okay that's that's kind of how it happened to me i had two three guys walk up to me and say i want to i want to be yeah. your sponsor yeah now i asked them previously and they told me no yeah then hey i got a phone call hey Juan, i, I think we're gonna sponsor you yeah. now oh, okay great so yeah once you had the event it didn't, it didn't matter if 30 what'd you say 34 people 37 entries on my 37 first entries but guess what you just made it happen and then people seen it and they're like holy shit yes let's put some money into this gentleman he looks like he has a bigger dream and then the next tournament you said oh, how many God. entries 150 plus damn so you did three times over three times as much yeah and <laughs> that was 150 competitors plus their wives and, their and wives kids. kids oh so it was like so then you packed i packed the house that time second yeah, time the whole man. house was packed <laughs> yeah that's right yeah i said see i told you i and was then, gonna pack then, this house and the, <laughs> and the good thing is you 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 got it going too because all the newspaper, everybody was there. The the news oh stations. man, it was so overwhelming, and and then it just happened to be my birthday that day. So oh, my, was it? Like I lose to this, I lose in my match. <laughs> Go figure, I lose on my birthday, and yeah. then I'm 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 down, you know, and I'm, I'm on the ground uh, after getting off the stage, and I hear, mm. "Hey, loser!" and it's my wife. Oh, and I'm man. like, oh man. So yeah. she's like, "Hey, we're gonna sing Happy Birthday." And I'm like, "No, I got this event going. I you <laughs> cannot sing Happy <laughs> Birthday." To me. Oh no. She stops everybody. We're singing happy birthday. Oh my God. And I'm like, no. And like, I hate yeah. this stuff. <laughs> I tell my wife, I don't want to do nothing for my birthday. Don't ever give me a surprise birthday party. Right. This, this is embarrassing to me. It is, man. <laughs> like, uh, it is just like, yeah, dude, come on, man. Like, you not know? right now. Not right now. This is my stuff. Don't, don't hurt my stuff with yeah. singing happy birthday to me. So, but anyhow, yeah, yeah man. But um, you got to enjoy the moments, right? For sure. I, I, I you never you know. know. Yeah, everything. Um, I was I was very happy to see my wife. Uh, she doesn't she doesn't really come to any of my events. And oh, when okay. she does, she makes an appearance. Yeah. She's like, "Oh, there's your wife, Juan," and I'm like, "Ah, yeah. oh, there's my that's, wife." That's awesome, though, man. <laughs> it's it's good to have a good support system as yes, much as you yes. can. Yes, she supports it for sure. For sure, yeah. Yeah, because it's hard it's hard to like do something that you really like or really love and without the support of a person that's that, you know what I mean. Like my 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 wife, she supports my podcast. She's already yeah. been on it three times. Oh, nice! nice. Like sometimes when like I can't find a guest, I'm like, babe, you got to get on my podcast. And get <laughs> we just have a conversation about stuff that's just going on, you know. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah. yeah. So um, so like, okay, so Brian, you and Brian Vollmer do this. Are you guys partners in the whole thing? Uh, like the whole like the Filthy Animals. That's both of your guys. So the Filthy Animals Arm Wrestling Club is mm -hmm. me and Brian. Okay. Um. But I'm going to go bigger. Mm -hmm. So me and Brian are talking for future stuff. We're going to do bigger things with the filthy animals. Okay. So, and then like, I, th I think we were talking about this earlier, but you, I, 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 I'm, I think about social media growing it. You, you're talking about putting in cameras, doing something like that in the future, right? So, or yeah. something like that. So future. You don't like, not right now, but let's. Well, yeah, streaming, it's actually, live. Yeah, so we're in the middle of it right oh, now. Okay, we're yeah. actually in the middle of testing all of our equipment. Mm -hmm. All the money that we make off these events goes back into the club. Okay. Uh, right now I have a gun raffle going on, and it supports the, fil the Filthy Animals Arm Wrestling Club. Okay. Uh, and that that helped out a lot. That that gun raffle, I didn't know so many people bought guns like oh, that. People love guns. Yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> if you're trying to, hey, you're trying to make some money. That's one way to go too. Uh, <laughs> any raffle. I, I mean, you buy a PS5, raffle that off. Mm -hmm. Anything to go to help your business go. Yeah. You need to do something. Any ideas will 
get money going for your club. So my oh, club, okay, yeah. um, uh, so that was the start. Um, we had to buy equipment, cameras, uh, laptops, several things, mm -hmm. and it all cost, man. It's about it was about two grand worth of equipment we had to buy. Mm. Yeah, cause uh, the, okay, so like, are you guys gonna um try to stream it like on Facebook? Like, what is your fa oh? What, tell me your Facebook name, cause I want to make sure that uh, oh. my editor puts it at the bottom. So, make sure you put so it. So Juan Carlos Ortega. Then then your uh, and then and it's then. Filthy Animals Arm Wrestling Club. Okay. Um, that's the uh, page. that's where I follow it. I, every time you every time you post something, I see it on there. Yeah. And even like when you guys went live, uh, when you guys went live on the tournament, when you guys were doing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, it actually notified me and told me that you. Oh, it nice! Said, it said because I follow your page, yeah. the, the arm wrestling page. So it said uh, Juan Carlos is going live, or, or that page is going live, and I actually seen some of the live yeah. uh, feed while it was going on. So we want to do that um, at events. We want to have all the TVs going so that all the com all the competitors and their guests mm -hmm. they are able to see what's going on there. So. Crowd control, that's one big thing that we need to work oh, on on okay. events. Crowd control. All the crowd, they, they gather around the arm wrestling table and they, mm. no one else can see except like those few people. Uh, so it's important to have a stage, like lift these competitors up so people can stare at them like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's important. Um, but uh, yeah, you want some sort of control at your event uh it, you got to have your events under control if not man it, it, you, i'm telling you it gets, I, too hectic. it gets so hectic you need help you need yeah. help here you need help there you need help i was the only one doing any stuff like i had okay my sponsor um rock'em sock'em mm -hmm. okay he's got a store out in bowling green on main street mm -hmm. uh, his name is john minier this guy he's a spectator Okay, so mm. he's really into the sport. Now he don't arm wrestle, he wants to arm wrestle. He does and he don't. He's more of the spectator guy. So when I was showing him my place for the event, he's like, Juan, you need this, you need that, you need this, this. And I'm like, dude, how am I gonna get all that? Mm -hmm. I got you. Hmm. Okay, and he goes and gets all this stuff. And man, he just made everything so much better at my mm. event. Uh, having him took some weight off my shoulders and uh to this day like uh, he's he's actually working on my page right now oh, okay. um we have uh filthy animals arm wrestling page going up uh, the one that you see on facebook mm -hmm. is that's just the start of it there's for now there's, yeah there's other pages going up and uh he's in the works right now for that so, so you guys are going to get a website and all that eventually. website merch mm -hmm. um all kinds all right. of stuff, man. So yeah, you guys want to grow it into a legit like arm wrestling like hub here in Toledo. Yep. Yep. Is there more hubs like that here in Toledo? There, there's other clubs, but they're like not. I mean, I don't really. If there is a club in Toledo, they know us. Mm -hmm. They know us, or we've arm wrestled with them, mm -hmm. or crossed each other. Um, and I want to say they're part of Filthy Animals now. Yeah. I, I think we took over Toledo <laughs> and Bowling Green, and and um, it's. I, I'm not bragging about it. I mean, it's true. We're growing, mm -hmm. and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, and that's what I want. So, I want that name to stick out. Okay, so anybody can join your club. Is anybody. That, anybody can yes. join. Yeah. So how do they? How do they join? Do they get a hold of you or get a hold of the website? Or? <sighs> If you don't join my club mm -hmm. and you want to arm wrestle, I suggest get into a club, start arm wrestling, practice all the time, as many times as your arm can take it, mm -hmm. and just get with a friend and let them let them let them arm wrestle with you and see how you're gonna feel to go into a competition if you want to take it serious. Mm -hmm. So um yes, we we encourage everybody to come to our club and be a part of it. And you guys train kids and women? Yes, and yes. You guys show them the techniques yes. and how to do it and all that? Yes, so every other Sunday we practice. Mm -hmm. We practice in Northwood, um, in Northwood, mm -hmm. uh, close to close to North Plass okay. over there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's Brian Vollmer's spot. We got four tables now. We did have two and now we got four. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Our place will be, I say at least, I don't know, 20 to 30 people. We'll have at least 20 to 30 people packed in that garage mm. within the next month. 
Just okay. because of that event, a lot of people seen it. A lot of people reached out to me and told mm -hmm. me, "Hey Juan, uh, you know, we want to we want to know we want to know more arm wrestling. We want to be involved. Mm -hmm. Just come to practice, man. Just mm -hmm. show up." Yeah. So like, uh, and then is is that someone's house? Brian's house? You guys so, go to? Yeah, we go to Brian's house. And he has like a his garage. He has four tables set up. And that's where you guys. Yep, practice. we're in his uh, we're in his garage. We got four tables set up. Uh, it's. It's okay. It's yeah. I seen. I seen it. I nice, think I, you know, I seen some videos of it. Yeah, it's it like pretty sweet. like a dungeon. That's what you need. And and that's exactly. So we're focused. You're yeah. focused on arm wrestling only. Yeah, that's you're all not you there need. for entertainment, man. Yeah, you're there yeah. to work. And you don't want to be too comfortable, bro. Yes. Like, being being. I I I feel that being too comfortable will make you like you know what I mean lazy and shit. <laughs> I like being uncomfortable. That's why I wake up at, I go to sleep at one in the morning, I wake up at 4.30 and I'm tired as hell, but I get up and I get ready to go to the gym. <laughs> and it's uncomfortable as hell and I'm tired as hell, but I'm like, fuck that. Cause man, life is too short, bro. It's a, we're, I'm already 43, I'm 43 years old. At the end of the day, you gotta think about it. The time is ticking if we don't- if, For sure. If, like, I see like some people that are fifty and something having heart attacks and dying and shit. Yeah. Then if 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 we don't start taking care of ourselves right now, then what the fuck? We how, how are we gonna get to fifty, sixty, seventy? Right. And I was to the point where I was like two hundred and seventy five, two hundred and eighty pounds. Mm. When I got out of prison, I weighed two twenty two. And then I just went right back to I, I worked out for three years in prison. And then I just, I got out and I just went right back to the stupid shit, eating fast food, fast yeah. food, fast food, snacks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, snacks, snacks. And I blew the fuck up. And then I started getting all these things. Like I had like this injury and all this stuff in my spine. Yeah. So then I was like, man, I was getting sick and I had to just had to wake up. Like I got to start doing something. Because yeah. yeah, the thing is, if there's not too many like, Okay, like at my point when I was 280, I can, I can already see if I kept going, I was going to be 300, 350. I was getting to the point where I just kept gaining and gaining. I didn't, I didn't see no end. I didn't see no end to it. And I was thinking one day, you don't ever see like big, obese, old people. You, you see skinny old people. But I was like, man, I, if I keep doing this, I'm going to die young, bro. I swear, like it just clicked. Yeah. I'm going to die young. So I need to figure out my life. And then I just started like going, I started fasting and going to work out and I've been doing it for like eight months. But I, I, I swear, man, there's, there's a point that you, you we got to think, we got to start doing something with our life because if we don't, it's just going to go downhill. And a lot of competitors do that. They think the same way, Yogi. They, they, they wake up every morning and they're like, I'm not going to eat this. I'm only going to eat this take this fasting for mm. this many hours and then I'm going to do this because they're getting ready for that competition. Mm. Um, there's a rock climber in, uh, in the Cleveland area. His name is Kevin Palco. Mm. Awesome guy. Um, and, and that's where he gets his strength from, from the rock climbing. Mm. He eats clean, um, eats clean, drinks clean, um, and trains hard. Probably man. works out a lot. Oh, this guy trains. Super he, he's hard. an arm wrestler. Yes, he's oh. uh, he's actually number one in his weight class um, in the one fifty four. Because if he's climbing, he's probably super strong in his hands. So, so this dude is is about ah man, I want to say he's about five six. He's in the one fifty four class. He's probably mm. one forty eight, and mm. got Popeye arms. Yeah, big yeah. forearm like that, man. It's... How do I? What do I do to work on my forearm? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I didn't even. Oh, you're you good. <laughs> good, man. Because I was thinking, like, yeah. my forearms are little, man. So what I do, like, like lifts like this. Hey, I'll be honest with you. I asked somebody that, and uh, he's all cut up. I yeah. said, dude, how do you do that? He says, everything works your forearms. Oh, okay. You want to squeeze everything. Everything that you're grabbing, you're squeezing, right? And yeah, then your yeah. forearms just blow up. That's from a weightlifter, uh, bodybuilder mm -hmm. type dudes telling me that. For arm wrestling, you're doing uh, wrist curls and uh, hammer curls, mm -hmm. and and um, oh, do you pick up ropes? Do, yes, we do. We do the ropes. Yeah. Um, uh, we do the rice buckets to 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 get your hand stronger. Yeah. Um, anything. Anything. Hold on, right, to explain to me that rice bucket. Yeah. You put your so, hand inside of a rice bucket. Yeah. And you yeah. You, it? you dump. Uh, you get a big bag <laughs> of rice. You throw yeah. it in a bucket, and you're you're massaging it the whole uh. entire time, and uh, you're doing them like. 30 different exercises 
for one minute each. Uh, for one minute, you're doing this. Or yeah. no, I'm sorry, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, you're doing this, then you're doing this, then you're scooping, <laughs> and then you're doing something different, and your hand is just like, like cringing, and your sore? whole forearm feels crazy. But that makes your hand stronger. Well, it gets it there. It, mm. it starts to get it there. If, if, you, if you do that every other day um, and you want to compete in arm wrestling, your hand is, you need to get your hand stronger and your wrist stronger. Mm. Okay? okay? That's one big thing. And then how, how, how about, are you ever worried about injuries? Do you guys ever get injured? God. Uh, so I started off as an injury. Brian injured me uh, in our Damn, match. Brian, why would you yeah, do that man. to him? Yeah, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's how it happened. Uh, uh, that that our first ever meeting yeah. match together, he injured me, and I didn't arm wrestle for like two, three months, man. Was that your elbow or something? The inside of my tendons, oh, right here. Tendon. It yeah. was a tendon that I felt it. It felt it rip, man, and my stuff was purple right here, all purple, and I was like, Damn. oh man, and it hurt like I couldn't even pick up my beer, and yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it was. So I'm a forklift driver, so I mean yeah. I couldn't do this. I had to, yeah, like, damn, you know. That sucks. <laughs> but uh, uh, Brian, why would you do this? Case? But uh, he felt bad. He's telling me, dude, my bad, yeah. you know, whatever. And I said, man, that's it. That's that's what we do. We we know the risks. You know the risks of mm -hmm. this, but you love the sport so much, you don't care if it hurts. You want to keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. Do some people break their arms? You said. I heard about that. Yeah, is that, just, is that rare? That's rare or what? Uh, unfortunately, it happens. Yeah. Um, let me. Okay, so let me just tell you. If I broke my arm today, arm wrestling, mm -hmm. um, somebody would be like, "Okay, you learned your lesson. Don't do it again." No, yeah. man, I'm gonna wait for that thing to heal, and I'm gonna get right back in there and do it. Yeah. I, I love arm wrestling. It is my passion since I've been a little kid. Yeah, watching over the top Sylvester Stallone in there and. Um, it, that was one big thing. And now it, it's just getting this, I'm living the dream for mm -hmm. that. I love it. I'm actually experiencing everything that I wanted to do in arm wrestling. And it's, it's just all happening. Yeah. It's giving you like a, like almost like a purpose. It's giving you something to strive yes. to keep going. Yes, and I keep, love the it, more man. you grow it, the, the more you feel like you're accomplishing something, I, I oh, think. Oh, God, yeah. And, and, and like I said, little by little, it's just getting bigger and mm. bigger and bigger. And um, mm. Yeah, man, and that's all I want to see is I just want to see it grow. I, mm. I want people to know that there's arm wrestlers out there. Uh, uh, arm wrestlers know. here in Toledo, too. There's a lot of arm wrestlers out here. And, and you know, as soon as you walk, oh, that guy's an arm wrestler. Yeah, oh, you can yeah. tell by their arms. Yeah, yeah. So no. usually their forearms are huge, right? Like so you know who the good arm wrestlers are, and they don't even work out, man. It's carpenters, oh, yeah. construction workers. If you're working with your hands all day, mm -hmm. you're good at arm wrestling. Yeah. I promise you, you're good at it. Yeah, some people maybe uh, my my dude Ruben's probably good. He pick, he cuts down trees and is always picking up logs and oh, shit. He's he's probably got he's, a real strong tendon strength yeah, in his probably, hand and his arms. He's probably a good ass. He can probably yeah, arm wrestle like crazy. He's probably got a strong grip and this yeah. is probably his hand probably feels uncomfortable to grab. Yeah, cuz cuz some some people just on their everyday job they're working out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they don't even got to go to the gym. They work out every single day doing what they do. And it's just called consistency. Uh yeah. it, them them okay, them doing that job every day with their hands. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to mimic in the gym. You have to mimic what you're doing on the arm wrestling table every day. Mm. Arm wrestling is every day. Arm day is every day. Mm. Like how they say, don't skip leg day. Yeah, yeah. Arm wrestlers, you don't skip forearm day, uh, arm day. Arm day is every day. Okay, that's pretty awesome. All right, is there, is there anything else you wanted to bring up or anything? Because uh, usually my podcast is about a half an hour, but I don't know. I think this. I is feel a, like we've been yeah, talking we've talked for, for a while. while, man. Is there any last thoughts about arm wrestling or? Like I said, if, if you're thinking about getting into arm wrestling, get with the club nearby you. Get with the Filthy Animals Arm Wrestling and uh, just join. Anybody can do it, mm -hmm. and I'd be ha happy to teach you. All right, cool. Sound thank good, man? Very, yeah, thank yeah, you very thank much you for, for having me. Out. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. Bye, guys.